Hello my dear students, uh, today I will be discussing about wells, uh, what are the different types of wells, open wells and tube wells. All of us know well is a vertical structure dug in ground for purpose of bringing groundwater to the earth's surface. Uh, basically, uh, we can classify the wells into two types, open wells and tube wells. You can see here, this is a open well and uh, this is a tube well. Uh, so so let us discuss some of the merits of uh, uh, wells. Um, uh, well is simplest and cheapest source of irrigation and the Indian farmer can easily afford it. A well is an independent source of irrigation and can be used as and when the necessary arises. A well can be dug at any convenient place. Uh, several chemicals such as nitrate, chloride, sulfate, etc. are generally found mixed in well water. They add to the fertility of soil when they reach the agricultural field along with well water. Uh, there are some demerits. Uh, let us discuss that. Uh, only limited area can be irrigated. Normally, a well can uh, irrigate uh, 1 to 8 hectares of land. The well may dry up and may be rendered useless for irrigation if excessive water is taken out. In the event of a drought, the groundwater level falls and enough water is not available in the well when it is needed the most. Tube wells can draw a lot of groundwater from its neighboring areas and make the ground dry and unfit for agriculture. Well and tube well irrigation is not possible in areas of brackish groundwater. These are the some of the demerits of wells. Uh, now let us discuss about uh, in detail what is open well. These are the wells which have comparatively large diameters and lower discharges. Usually they have discharge of 20 meter cube per hour but if constructed by efficient planning, it gives discharge of 200 to 300 meter cube per hour. They are constructed of diameter of about 1 to 10 meter and have depth of about 2 to 20 meter. They are constructed by digging, uh, by digging. therefore they are also known as dug wells. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is the well, uh, open well and uh, this classification of open well based on depth. Okay, so uh, there are two types of wells open well based on the depth. The first one is shallow open well. These are the wells resting on the water bearing strata, strata and gets their supplies from the surrounding materials. You can see here this figure and second one is deep open well. These are the wells resting on the impervious layer. It is also known as mortar layer beneath which lies water bearing pervious layer and gets the supply from this layer. You can see here this is a ground level and this is the ground water table. Okay, This is a deep well and this is the bore well, uh, bore hole and this is the shallow well Okay, and impervious strata. This is impervious strata or motor layer and this is the pervious strata. Pervious strata means it allows the water to flow through it. In the impervious is it doesn't allow the water to flow through it. Okay, this is pervious strata and pervious strata and uh, uh, this is pervious strata. So this portion is impervious strata, strata, and uh, so here this is the deep well, the, and this is shallow well. This is the classification based on the depth: shallow open well and deep open well. Next uh, 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 head. Uh, criteria is classification of open well based on type of lining or walls. Uh, here um, one uh, type of wall that is based on the walls, kacha walls, um, kacha wells and uh, these type of wells are only constructed when water table is high as this type of well sometimes collapses. Okay, uh, This is possible where there is a water table is high and it has no lining. The well sites are unprotected, also called unlined well, uh, and uh, it is limited depth uh, about uh, 6 meters. 
okay next one is classification of open well based on type of lining okay uh, here um, again there are two types the first one is wells with impervious lining and um, these are the most suitable and stable type of open well this is mostly common adopted type of well impervious lining um, and uh, these are constructed by first digging a pit uh, then a cup uh, which is a circular ring with the sharp bottom is inserted okay you can see here then uh, then a masonry wall up to some distance above the ground is constructed then as excavation proceeds it sinks below blow and then masonry is further extended and well is constructed as water enters from the bottom type of flow is spherical you can see here this is the ground surface and this is the uh, steaming wall and this is the water table or water level and the bore wall uh, and clay layer and this is water bearing sand formation next type is well with pervious lining here uh, these type of wells are suitable in coarse formations these are constructed by masonry of dry bricks or stones without any binding materials you can see here these are the uh, masonry of dry bricks or stones uh, so the water supply enters from the wall of a well therefore the flow is radial uh, such wells are provided with bottom plug so the flow is not combination of radial and spherical uh, as you can see here this is the ground level and unsaturated zone and this is the saturated zone saturated zone is the soil is uh, fully filled with water and this is uh, uh, it is not fully saturated as it is an unsaturated zone water surface this is the water table these are the curves and concrete plug big uh, ballast and so it looks like this well with pervious lining next we'll discuss about tube wells uh, a tube well is a long pipe sunk in ground intercepting one or more water bearing strata uh, and as compared to open well uh, their diameter is less uh, about uh, 80 to 600 mm and tube well is a type of water well in which a long 100 to 200 mm stainless steel tube or pipe is bored into an underground aquifer uh, the lower end is fitted with a strainer and a pump at the top lifts water for irrigation. A tube well is a deeper well from which water is lifted with the help of a pumping set operated by an electric motor or a diesel engine. Obviously, the tube well cannot be constructed everywhere and requires some geographical conditions favoring its installation. So, I think all of you know about this. So, there is no much explanation is required. If I read out also, you will uh, be able to understand. So, this is the uh, tube uh, well. You can see here pump and this is the tube well setup. Now, this is the PVC pipe and the poly pipe screen and this is the gravel, the stones. Okay, um, so this is the, uh, I mean, uh, it gives the uh, clear idea about uh, tube well. And uh, here uh, there are some factors uh, while installing the tube well you have to take care. The first one is there should be sufficient quanti quantity of groundwater because a tube well can generally irrigate 2 hectares per day against 0.2 hectares per day irrigated by an ordinary well. Ordinary well it uh, that supplies uh, very less quantity of water. It irrigates only 0.2 hectares per day but uh, in the case of tube well it irrigates about 2 hectares per day so sufficient quantity of groundwater is required and second point is the water level should be near 
nearly 15 meters. If the water table is more than 50 meters deep, the cost of pumping out water from the tube well becomes uneconomic. So, you have to uh, take care of this also. The water level should be nearly 15 meters. But if it is more than 50 meters, then it becomes uneconomic. There should be regular supply of uh, cheap electricity or diesel so that water from the tube well can be taken out at the hour of need. The soil in the immediate neighborhood of the tube well should be fertile so that there is demand for irrigation and the cost involved in the construction and operation of the tube well can be recovered by the increased form production. These are the some of the factors uh, while installing the tube well uh, you have to take care. And then uh, there are also uh, different types of uh, tube wells. Uh, the first one is classification of tube well based on depth. Here there are uh, again there is a shallow tube well. Uh, these are the tube uh, which has depth limited to 30 meters and maximum have discharge of Twenty meter cube per hour, and uh, deep tube well. These are the tube wells in which have maximum depth of about six hundred meter, and may give discharge more than eight hundred meter cube per hour. So this is again uh, the classification based on supply system. Uh, the first one is uh, strainer type tube well. You can see here. This is the most commonly used tube uh, such that uh, in a general uh, tube well means strainer tube well. This is the most commonly used. Usually tube, uh, tube well is uh, called by the strainer tube well only. In this type of well, a strainer which is a wire mesh with the small openings is wrapped around the main pipe which also has large openings such that area of the opening in strainer and main pipe remains same. You okay? can see here this is the plug, pervious layer, impervious layer, pervious, impervious and this is the water table. Okay, Here in this well there will be a wire mesh with the small openings and which is wrapped around the main pipe which has a large opening so that area of opening in the strainer and the pipe remains same. Uh, annual uh, space is left between two strainer uh, so that the open area of the pipe perfor uh, perforations is not reduced. This type of flow is radial. Next, uh, in tube wells, uh, metal pipe driven in ground is perforated to allow only clear water to enter the hole. It is obvious that if no other means is adopted, the perforations in the uh, metal tube will have to made very fine. Uh, it is very costly process as an alternative wire net may be wrapped on the cylindrical frame of small diameter but it is liable, liable to break as it is very delicate. Uh, so the best and most commonly adopted practice is to provide a pipe with fairly big perforations and surrounding that is a wire net or a strainer with smaller openings. Normally the mesh size of the wire net or strainer is kept equal to D to D of the surrounding soil. This type of well uh, derives water from one aquifer of unlimited extent or from a confined aquifer or from number of aquifers. Second one is cavity tube well. Here cavity tube well consists of a pipe sunk in ground up to the hard clay layer. Uh, it draws water from the bottom of the well. In uh, initial stages, fine sand is also pumped with water and in such a manner a cavity is formed at the bottom. So, the water enters from the aquifer into the well through this cavity. It is an empty space within a solid object. A cavity tube well draws water from bottom of the well, not from the sides and is drilled in alveolar formations. You can see here and the flow in a cavity wall is spherical. The area of flow is increased by enlarging the size of cavity. So, um, 
how is the cavity formed uh, the tube well is taken down till it penetrates the impervious or mortar layer and reaches the water bearing layer okay uh, in the initial stages when the water is pumped out fine sand a uh, fine sand comes in the tube well with the water and consequently a hollow or cavity is formed at the bottom okay when the water is pumped uh, so a fine sand comes along with the water in the tube well so this forms the hollow or cavity at the bottom after the cavity formation only clear water enters the uh, tube well uh, since the rate of pumping is more the velocity of water entering the coarse sand layer is critical but when it comes in hollow the velocity is reduced finally the water enters the tube well at the bottom with a velocity lower than the critical velocity so in this way the cavity is formed now uh, how to developing a cavity a centrifugal pump is generally adopted for developing a cavity well um, and uh, generally the depth of cavity is small usually in uh, centimeters the last one is uh, the slotted type uh, tube well here uh, sometimes the nature of the subsoil formation is not anticipated correctly okay so obviously bore hole given for constructing strainer well uh, will be a failure so um, if a mortar formation is present cavity well may be resorted to uh, but if neither of the conditions are existing the slotted tube well uh, can be rightly constructed uh, there should be of course an aquifer present at the bottom in the bore hole say about uh, 36 cm diameter a 15 cm diameter uh, education pipe is uh, lowered um, till it reaches the bottom the bottom of the education pipe is slotted as shown in the figure you can see here the size of the slots may be <coughs> 25 mm by 3 mm with uh, 12 mm spacing okay you can see here this is the slotted type uh, tube well here this is the aquifer and uh, these are the slots and um, this is 30 centimeter bore hole 10 centimeter diameter bore hole and 15 centimeter education pipe and this is the add pipe okay so this is uh, about uh, uh, the slotted tube well so in this video i have discussed about uh, uh, the various uh, two types of wells open wells and tube wells i hope all of you understood thank you